Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, so it's been a few days. Um, let me get the randomizer up here. Sure, that's that's a nice, gentle way to ease ourselves back into it. Pardon me. Um, yeah, so what happened? Well, um, so we came back from our vacation on the Monday last week. We had a great time. Took the baby to daycare on Tuesday. No problem. Took the baby to daycare on Wednesday. And then all the parents that were there were like, oh, so no daycare tomorrow, huh? And I was like, yeah, yeah, wait, what? So my, my daycare provider had a little bit of time booked off, which I don't, just to be clear, I don't begrudge. Everybody needs some time off. Um, I'm willing to do it, man. I'm willing to go all the way. Uh, so the baby was home from daycare on Thursday, which precludes my recording time for sure. The baby was home from daycare on Friday, which is normal. Saturday, Sunday, A is family time, but also B, um, my wife was a little indisposed temporarily. She had some other stuff going on, and as a result, I was on a lot of baby duty. And it's just, it, you know, is that simple. My life is in a good spot, honestly. Isaac's recording time slot exists on a deck of, or a house of cards. <laughs> when everything goes normal, as it does more than 50% of the time, we're off to the races. We're, we're sitting pretty. When one little light gust... Look, look at these consumables, man. This is insanely good. When one little light gust of wind comes along, the whole thing topples over for a couple of days. That's where we're at right now and perhaps for the next 18 years or so. However... It's worth it. Like that song says, Baby, You're Worth It. Wah, 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 wah. Probably, I have to say, the song I have referenced the most, but actually heard the least. Give, give me one moment here. Baby, You're Worth It. Song by Kina. Really? Really? That doesn't seem right. Baby, yeah, you worth it. I'm baby, you're worth it. What's the word? You're worth it song. This has got to be it. Cimarelli? <laughs> no, wait. You are not your makeup, not your clothes, an anonymous face that no one knows. No, that does this. This is not the song. R&B song that has the lyrics, baby, you're worth it. Hold on. Is it worth it? Worth it. Worth it song. Fifth Harmony! That's gotta be it. Ah, maybe? I don't know. I honestly have no clue. Did I invent this song in my own brain? I feel like it's one of those songs that you hear like only in like movie commercials. You know, like you only hear that song that's like, and keep it hot, hot, hot in a commercial for like an Adam Sandler movie where they go to like a, a sandals resort in the Caribbean. Baby You're Worth It, it like plays in a movie where there's like a famous Hollywood actress, but she's supposed to, we're, we're supposed to suspend disbelief that she's not attractive. And then later she gets her hair done and she walks in and there's like a little slow-mo pan up uh, of her body. And it goes like, maybe you're worth this summer. You're about to find out Anne Hathaway is attractive. <laughs> Sent up perfectly in not another teen movie. One of the few things that movie did very well, I would add, or I would say. Um, give me a second here. We, we had a, an amazing first floor. I got no complaints, but I figure we might as well take some damage here while the taking damage is good. That makes sense. That's, that's not a lazy uh, turn of phrase. <laughs> This run, after a floor like that one, it should be close to unlosable. I think all I gotta do is remind myself, you know, it's been a couple days. What kind of wave have we been riding in Isaac? We haven't been doing too badly. I know we only got a two streak right now, but we haven't been doing too badly. Um, and one of the reasons for that is uh, angel deals. Yeah, if you can resist the temptation to take that first devil deal, angel deals, you know, they, they can cure what ails you, man. It turns out... Getting something for nothing is actually like a pretty sweet bargain in this game, especially when something has like a pool of items that are actually uh, extremely good. I'll take it. I regret nothing. 
But anyway, what did we get up to this weekend? Dude, not that much, but there was like, I mean, we went grocery shopping, uh, but like to uh, a different part of Vancouver. I'm just trying to figure out how to phrase it. Like, we went to a Korean grocery store. Um, and sometimes it's nice to, you know, get out of the city. Because, like, if you live in Vancouver, it, this might be true for, like, other cities on Earth, just to be clear. But if you live in Vancouver, you know, there's a few Korean grocery stores. There's, you know, H Mart downtown. There's Hanam Supermarket, you know, down in the West End on Robson. That's in the Hammock District. Um... There's Kim's Mart, which I can't remember. I feel like it's on East Broadway. I don't know. I'm just saying this stuff. A anytime anybody tells you what street a business is on, if you didn't ask for directions, just acknowledge it for what it is, which is I'm flexing that I have some knowledge of the city. I'm, I'm letting my inner New Yorker show, okay? Some might say. Many people are saying it, actually. Um, but it's a city. They all share kind of like the same problem, which is that there's a very limited amount of real estate available. The aisles are, uh, what, a, what a horrible bomb. The aisles are super cramped. You know, you can't have like two direction traffic going through the aisles, limited supply, etc., etc. It's fine, but when you get the chance, oh man, if you could head out to low heat, Get on North Road, you got that huge H Mart, you got that huge Hanum right across the street. Oh, baby. And then the aisles are still really cramped and almost impossible to get around. I guess we're leaving our item room behind. But the selection is through the roof. So that's what we did. But man, there was like, I mean, th this is now where I'm at in, in my life, I guess. But there was some crazy traffic. You know, normally it's not that exhaustive of a trip. This time it was like a big deal. Um, there's tons of traffic. People driving like psychos, man. I don't know if it's just that I... I never have driven, at least intentionally, recklessly. I mean, I, have I, you know, taken some turns, uh, maybe made a lane change without checking my blind spot once or twice over a 12-year driving career or I guess like a 17 year driving career sure I think everybody has made mistakes while driving I'm lucky enough to have not ever been penalized for them but I think maybe having a baby in the car has made it so I'm like an even more safe and also deliberate driver because I made that tweet on Saturday that was like why y'all changing lanes so much and it really is like it's crazy that you'll be like, you know, the highway speed limit in BC is like 90 kilometers an hour. It's relatively slow, I'll admit. But I'll be like 100 meters away from an exit, doing 10 over the speed limit. Don't arrest me, officer. I promise I'm based. Um, and then like someone will, from behind me, go into the passing lane, pass me, then cut two lanes to the right in front of me just to get to the intersection like literally two seconds faster than they would have. If they if they had just stayed behind me, and it always like I'm not emasculated by it. I'm I'm typically just baffled. I'm like, is it really worth it? Surely you understand on some level. You've gained an infinitesimal unit of time. So I can't. It can't be about the time. Is it that you're gonna be going into uh, like a a slower area of traffic? You're gonna be entering like a like a town. So instead of uh, it, it's not so much that you're like, oh, I gotta get here faster. It's that I just want one last taste of highway adrenaline before I actually get off the highway. I, like, I, I just didn't understand it, man. And maybe I'm being, you know, I don't know what word we would have used when I was a kid. Maybe stickler. Maybe we'd say I'm being a stickler here. But I don't know when we all stopped using our signal lights, man. It's really like, when I started driving in Vancouver, I definitely noticed that there was a limited signal light respect here i definitely and i think this is not just this city but perhaps it's a worldwide epidemic many people are saying it i i feel like genuinely less than two-thirds not less than half but less than two-thirds of people are actually using their signal lights it's kind of crazy to me now i'll admit i'm an over signaler within the context of let me explain to you. I don't, I, I don't over-signal on the road, necessarily. Um, but I remember reading a comment on r slash Vancouver 
that was like... I'm trying to think of the exact way to phrase this, because I'm not trying to glorify what they were doing, which was driving under the influence. But they said, last time I... This is their quote, not me! They said, last time I drove high, I, I was so cautious, I was using the sig my signal lights in my underground parking garage. And I laughed at it, but then I also thought to myself, I just do that. <laughs> Why? Because I, I am not such a, a baby slash snowflake that, you know, using the signal light takes any significant amount of either cognitive effort or, like, muscular work, you know? Like, I'm just... Literally, it's just like, oh, I'm about to turn left. It's, it's like, easier, it's more frictionless to know that, you know, every time I am about to make a turn or a move to a different lane, that I am going to hit the signal light rather than also putting it through, you know, cognitive executive function and being like, am I going to, is this worth hitting my signal light for? No, I mean, I just send it. So, like, you know, that might strike you as a nerdy thing to do. Um... But if nobody's around to call you a nerd, then who cares, like, w whether you're perceived of as a nerd. Plus, isn't it, there's like a driver's fallacy, right? Like, I'm not gonna signal when there's no one around? Well, how do you know there's, like, with 100% certainty that there's, like, no car that's gonna, you know, intercept your path? I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to suggest this is an erosion of, you know, the social contract in society. I am just surprised at how many people aren't using their signal lights anymore. It's, it... A lot of it, for me, is psychological. Like, if you're making a lane change where... You're 99.999% confident... There's nobody that's gonna... Be affected by your lane change. Do you have to signal? Well, I don't know. That probably depends what the law is where you are. But, like, is it that big of a deal if you don't signal? Probably not. I'll acknowledge there's like a psychological element for me, which is, oh, look at this guy. Wow, this guy thinks they're so cool. They don't even have to signal. Oh, Mr. Big Shot driving your lifted Ford F-150. Oh, geez. Uh, let me pass you real quick so I can get the best spot at Canadian Tire before you get like, you know, I, I just go off, man. If you think this is only like for the videos and the streams, this is like the constant stream of consciousness that's running throughout my own head. But basically, you know, I become like a Mandelbaum, to put it in Seinfeldian terms. Anytime somebody doesn't signal in my presence, so you think you're better than me? Mandelbaum, Mandelbaum. Ah, my back. Really should have used two of clubs earlier, but you know what? We take those, we take those. It's just, I don't know, man. It's just kind of irritating, because it's like... I, I use this metaphor now and then. This is not really a metaphor, but this expression there's such a thing as like a victimless crime if there's no cars coming and you jaywalk who who cares i was gonna say who gives a, a an s who cares nobody cares you know it's a victimless crime on the other hand if there's lots of cars coming and you jaywalk i'm not gonna say it's a victimful crime like oh won't somebody think of the drivers because i know that there's like 8% of the people watching this video are like, did you know that 100% of car accidents would be avoidable if there weren't any cars on the road? Okay, send me a ticket from F Fantasy Island. What, what is... What's the quote? Do you see Tattoo? Because I feel like I'm on Fantasy Island right now. Hold on. Night at the Roxbury Fantasy Island quote. <clears throat> Are you seeing planes? Is your name Tattoo? Because swear to God, you're living on Fantasy Island. Man, that was a great show, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, anyway. And then Dan Hedaya says, The only fantasy I have is of having two sons who are competent. Not one with his head in the clouds, and the other one with his head up is, you know what? I've seen that movie too much. It's not even good. But anyway, I'm not going to say the drivers are like, you know, put out that much, but... Like, you know, when you jaywalk when there's a lot of cars coming, maybe you're inconveniencing some people, or maybe you end up, you know, getting smashed into by a Hummer H2. The, the victim thing, it can go both ways. But, like, not using your signal lights is, like, it's a victimful crime. Even when it is victimless. And the reasoning that I have there is because you never get a gain by not using your signal light. 
The gain is literally like, I mean, I think it, you think it makes you, well, again, this is my own projection, perhaps. <laughs> I think when people don't signal, they're like, look at me, I'm a big shot, I'm on my cell phone, business, 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 I don't have time to signal, unlike you. Um, when in reality, the way I look at it is, I am so f freaking weak, man, that I can't even... Using my pinky finger to lightly adjust this knob on the steering column? I couldn't possibly. Will you compensate me for this labor? You know, like it's... It's like the shopping cart uh, ethos all over again, but we don't need to get into that. I'm just saying. I'm always surprised. So yeah, I'm never going to apologize for using my signal light in the, in the parking garage. Can I tell you one, one other thing that might surprise you? When it's raining at all... Unless, and it rains pretty heavy here, so just start with that context in mind. Unless it's just a light mist, I always put the wipers on full blast. Always. Can I, and I'm going to elaborate, why wouldn't I? You think I want to, you know, drive with a little bit of rain on my windshield at any given time? No, I want it to be like as clear as possible, so I always crank it. I don't understand why the windshield wipers have like... That many settings. I'm like angry Jerry Seinfeld, man, for real. I'm going off here. You know, off is a good setting for the windshield wipers. Don't get me wrong. Apart from that, I, I really just think there should be like light mist and on. I don't need 10 settings for my windshield wipers. Just like maybe have one emergency setting that is like actual torrential downpour. Go as fast as possible, even if it, you know, means I... I feel like I'm blinking 180 times a second. I don't know what we want here, man. Are we on Dank Depths 1? I skip. I skip and save. He will skip and save grandchildren on our knee. Vera, Chuck, and, you know, when I'm 64, by the Beatles. Classic song. You gotta admit. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. I don't know. You'll realize I, it, it takes you a while to learn about yourself, right? I, I think I'm still learning about myself on a, on a daily basis. Um, but one thing I've definitely realized is, is one of my hot button issues for getting mad is when someone takes literally no effort well, okay, literally a minuscule amount of effort to make a, a ton of other people's lives easier around them. Another classic, well, the first classic example, signal lights on the highway. Literally is just done and you're in. Another one for me is when two people are walking side by side on the street. This is fine. I can live with this. Um, and, you know, sidewalks are typically like you know, two people across in width, roughly. Depends where you live, I suppose. I mean, if you're on, you know, the Hollywood Boardwalk, maybe it's a different story. If you're on the Embarcadero, maybe it's a different story. But in most of the rest of the world, Mr. Tom Cruise, we, you know, we got like a two, two to three person sidewalk. It's nice to have a little buffer in the middle. But uh, when, you know, you're walking towards a couple and then the couple makes no effort to move out of the way even just like one person goes behind the other person you don't have to like you know split the red sea so that i can get in there i don't even remember what you do just like one person walk behind the other one for two seconds make an effort so like the other person can sneak by it's five random pills i sleep i sleep take that i oh it's not that i think i'm so important it's just like if we're all equal why do you get to take a Two times as much as the width of the sidewalk. You know, we should both have the ability to pass on impeded. I I honestly think there's a lot of people out there that treat like, and I I'm, I'm semi serious at least when I say this. I don't know how serious I am, <laughs> but I think they treat everything in life as some kind of weird uh, social game, where they're like, if I ever have to even slightly inconvenience myself like even take my convenience from a level 100 to a level 99.9 .9, 
I'm not gonna do it because that means like I think they're better than me. And I'm like, no, man. I think it means you're like part of a functioning society. You know this. You, you, you think I like waving to somebody who lets me in in traffic? No. I, I wave to them because waving to them is the right thing to do because they did a nice thing for me. And then we then that person, as a result of receiving the wave, is more likely to let other people in in traffic in the future. And as a result of that, it leads to, you know, a knock-on effect. That person that was trying to get into traffic eventually gets in a lot easier. They get in easier. They go home. They're not so snippy. All of a sudden, you know, everybody in their family is having a better time. And before you know it, the world's a better place. But no, it, it's, it's not worth making the world a better place just to use my signal light because then someone might cut me off. I'm not the a-hole. The a-hole would be the person who, if I used my signal light, cut me off. So I'm only, I'm an ironic a You know, you get what I'm just, we all got to be, we all got to live on this planet together, man. That's all I'm trying to say. And bring your carts back. And bring your garbage when you're leaving the movie theater. You're going from the place where you made the garbage to the place where the garbage can is anyway. You just bring your garbage to the garbage can there. Don't leave it in your seat. You're almost making more of an effort to just, like, put someone else down to make yourself feel superior. That's, that's the sad news of it. I know we, we probably got a lot of... I bet we have mostly, watching this video, mostly cart returners. In terms of these three objectionable behaviors, I bet most people watching this return their carts. I bet about 75% of people watching this return their garbage at the movie theater to the, to the garbage can. Um, and I, I think that, to be fair, there's probably a certain percentage of people that are like, oh, I didn't know you were supposed to do that. I thought, I was always told growing up that you should just leave it in your seat because it makes it easier to clean up. Look, it may genuinely depend on your theater chain. I honestly, I can't speak for that. But here, um, I don't want any of this. I'm, I'm good to go, man. Here, um, when you exit a theater, usually they have, like, attendants standing there with enormous, uh, like, basins, and you deposit your garbage. So, like, I, I honestly think when people are like, duh, you're not supposed to take your garbage from your seat. I think, like, your parents wanted to be lazy and told you a lie that you wouldn't question. Not realizing the knock-on effect that it would have on society for decades. But I bet we got a lot of people watching this that don't use their signal lights... And I bet there's a lot of copium coming out from them right now. You don't understand. You don't understand where I live. If I use my signal light, someone will cut me off. I have no choice but to join in the ruckus. Please. I'm actually the smartest gamer that's ever existed. <laughs> I didn't... I... I never use a get out of jail free card effectively. That, that felt very nice, honestly. It felt very nice indeed. Now, don't use your sun card. You know, we should be patient, preserve it. Look at that stutter step. You already know I'm getting there on the perfect line. Preserve it for if we need to live. If we need it to live, I guess I should say. This is a great chance for us to get an angel deal or a devil deal. I'm glad we took angel deals, man, because we did not get much HP after that first floor. Anyway, so apart from that, my weekend was pretty good. Still haven't watched Righteous Gemstone Season 2, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Didn't really get up to much. I had a lot of baby duty, man. But honestly, the baby duty is like... It's becoming a lot easier. You know, it, it's easy and it's difficult in different ways. Like now, there, there was a time... And, and this I don't say this to like make a joke. Like this is the truth. When you have, like, a newborn, the actual looking after of the baby is very simple. Let's not call it easy, but it's very simple. Like, there were days I was waking up, you know, at 3 a.m. and then 5.30 to do, like, some bottle feedings, don't get me wrong. And Kate had it much harder because she would have to, you know, wake up in the middle of the night to nurse. And sometimes babies are nursing, you know, right after they're born, like, once every two hours. It's, it's crazy. But the actual, like, uh, the, the moment to moment looking after was pretty simple, you know? She's in her, like, bouncing uh, lounger 
you just kind of put like some TV on and then you just look at her and you're like, she's sleeping. And then, you know, like 20 minutes later, you look at her and you're like, oh, no, she's awake. But like, they, they don't really, <laughs> you know, they don't do too much at that age. And then I would think like, at least from my current experience, like that from the age when they first start to crawl, it gets a little bit more complicated because you really are taking on the role of, of almost like a, a teacher slash like prison warden. Even though you're not getting much in the way of feedback, um, you're like trying to teach them things and like, you know, this is an apple, this is the number two, not the kind they leave in their diapers, but like the literal numeral. Um, they're, they're more than capable of understanding the type they're leaving in their diapers, I think. If they're not, well, they, they can start the potty training right away. It's uh, the school of hard knocks. That's an HP upgrade. You could just tell from the pixels. Um, that being said, it's hard because you're like, you're not getting much feedback. And also, you have to stay ever vigilant because they can really get themselves into trouble. Like, no matter how much you baby proof your house, they will concoct ways to, you know, surface nightmares in your brain like i don't even want to think about the fact that she's she's walking now and she'll like walk right up to our baby gate and she'll like press the button that is supposed to unhinge the latch she doesn't have the power yet she's really not even close to having the power to unhinge the latch but i'm like you shouldn't know that <laughs> you're like I, I, I understand you've watched us probably open this thing and you've picked up on that as an observation, but at the same time, like, purge that information from your mind because it's not like we're keeping you, you know, up here because we don't want you to see all the happy, fun times that happen downstairs. Is that we don't want you to open the gate and then tumble down the stairs. But anyway. But now, um... Like, don't get me wrong. It's still... There are times when you're like... I don't know how many more times I could read. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? But it's also a lot easier because ooh, full mapping. We don't we don't need that till next floor. We've already done like all this floor. Um, she's communicating so much more now, and it's actually like, man, it's like a dream come true. Because now we can almost have like a negotiation when it comes to activities. So she wants to watch Sesame Street, like, literally all the time. But there's only some times when we can watch Sesame Street, you know? While she's waiting for me to cook her dinner. Sure, that's a great time to watch Sesame Street. Right after she just finished watching Sesame Street. Not a great time for a second episode of Sesame Street. So instead of just what would have happened, like, you know, two or three months ago, I feel. Where I would have just taken her out of the high chair and, like, she would have been screaming... Like, why am I not watching Sesame Street? Now I feel like we can almost be like, you know, she'll be like Abby, who is a character on Sesame Street, if you're not aware. And I'll be like, no, Abby, how about books? And then she'll be like Elmo. And I'm like, mm, instead of Elmo, what about Go-Go? And Go-Go is like, you know, when she does a little walking practice upstairs. Well, 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 would you look at that? Yes. I think at this point, we, we kind of got no choice. And then she's like, okay, go, go. And then we, we can almost come to an understanding that way. Instead of me just, you know, in, enforcing my will. Don't give me, there's some situations where she's like, no, Elmo. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be the dad who let you watch like seven episodes of Sesame Street back to back. There's some days where, honestly, that would hit the spot for me personally. I would love to mindlessly doom scroll on my phone like the old days and then be like, why am I doing this? Um, but while I got the energy... No, no, no. We're going to do some, some active parenting. Not always a popular decision. But definitely, I would say, as the child... Like, not, I'm not saying... I'm not calling my child the child. The only child I would call the child is Baby Yoda. Put some respect on his name. But as, as children learn to communicate... I'm sure it's like, you know, because the way I would think about like talking with a child before I had a child was like, you know, it's like you're bargaining, you're having nonsense conversations, you know, it's, it's no my dinner with Andre, let's put it that way. However, 
I know people always say this, it's easy to be, like, skeptical, but when it's your child, it's different. You know, you, it, 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 it's heartwarming when she's like that. She's, sometimes she says, like, semi-sentences now. I, th I can't remember if I had mentioned this in, in my last prehistoric Isaac episode from uh, eight days ago or whatever. But the other day, she was like, Daddy, eyes. And she pointed to my eyes. Well, really, my glasses. And then she said, off. Daddy, eyes off. <laughs> she knows off from, like, hat, taking a hat off. So I took my glasses off, and then she went, Oh, no. It was really good. It was a cute moment for everybody involved. Say it. Say it was a cute moment for everybody involved. Say it! Okay, hold on. I think this was the right choice for sure. We use the sun card now for alternative means than we originally thought. But still, look at that. Now we know where we're going. This is a well-handled run. And honestly, a great example of, you know, storing your nuts for the winter time. We didn't go for that first deal with the devil where it was tempting. It would have been very easy to think... Hey, our HP is so good, or it's going to keep climbing, probably. Let's just take a look. And honestly, you never know what was in there, so it might have been the right decision. But I feel like we got this win because I wasn't greedy with that first deal with the devil. And as a result, even though we didn't necessarily end up killing it with a deal with the angel, um, although we got Blood of the Martyr, which is really good, um, you know, we, we just played it at our own pace instead of trying to, you know, ride a double black diamond. Getting ourselves in trouble. Anyway, I don't really remember what I was talking about. That's okay. That, that happens a lot <laughs> these days. Stop hitting me when I can't even see where you are, you piece. Not in trouble yet? Not in trouble? Just gonna sneak right by you? Just gonna sneak right by you? We still beat the lamb here. That could change. But for the time being, I, I beat the lamb with this squad. We win these. Mm, that seems dangerous. I don't know if that, that decision could cost us. Because I don't know how much the skull hurts you. If it's like a percentage chance or whatever. Don't even start with me, by the way. It has a skull on it. Like, that's got me... That's got me twisted up. Are you kidding me, man? Chocolate milk, soy milk. That strikes me as being very bad. Is it possible I'm making many wrong decisions in a row? Yes. But I think this is the most important right decision of all. Getting 1.5 damage up <laughs> for the lamb fight. Ghost pepper? Ghost pepper? More ghost peppers? Thank you, thank you. It's not ghost pepper, it's bird's eye, but... Anyway, so yeah, that's where I've been. Turning into a real dad, complaining about kids these days not using their signal lights, and... Uh... Also doing a lot of dad duties. But no, 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 don't, don't let me misrepresent myself. It is not kids these days not using their signal lights. It's exclusively Dodge Ram drivers, and I can't figure out why. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See ya!